and thanks for joining us on another great edition of Two Guys and a Lot of Wine. I'm Bobby P. And I'm James Kimbrough. And I am pleased to have two very good friends on the show this evening, uh, Sandy Holland and Rocky Holland. And Sandy Holland is representing Wine Decadence, a wine and food-oriented business, which gives people the opportunity to taste wine as well as have some food that goes with it. In their own home. In their own home. In their own home, which is pretty exciting. So thank you for joining me, Sandy. Thank you for having me. And uh, it's something that we've talked about in the past when we've gotten together socially, mm -hmm. and um, I thought it'd be a great idea to have you on the show to talk about your business, what that encompasses, and what people can expect if they want to have somebody like you come to their home. Okay. So Wine Decadence is um, an in-home party. Um, it's, like, it's just party. It's <laughs> much, it's, most people have had a Tupperware or a Pampered Chef party. It's very much like that, except we bring wine and we bring some dips, and the guests get to try the wine before they purchase it. And hosts earn rewards based on that. And they, that that falls right in line with my first rule of thumb, which is try it before you buy it. Yeah. So I, mm -hmm. I'm really in favor of Absolutely. this whole business process. And you come with information on each wine as to regards to the vineyard or the type of varietal and stuff like that. No. Yep. What we like to do um, during our tastings is, you know, we want everyone to have fun, but we want everyone to leave with a little bit of knowledge about each of the wines that we try. And become as smart as your husband, Rocky. Yeah, <laughs> not quite that smart. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> well, yeah, let's not go that far. You and Jim far. set a high bar over yeah. there, so you and Jim set a high bar. <laughs> so I know our first, and we set these up earlier before the show started, and uh, what can you tell us about our first sparkling tonight? So the first one we're going to try is Piccini. It is a Prosecco from Italy. Um, it's one of our most popular ones, and it is our only sparkling wine. Oh, it's your only sparkling? Mm -hmm. That's surprising. Yeah. Hey, Rocky, have you, are you familiar with this area or this vineyard, or have you uh, had this one? I've had this wine. This Prosecco is, is very good, you know, for the price value. Um, well, and you can actually I, talk about the price values in regards to a few dollar range. If you're comparing it to, like, Champagne, uh, Prosecco, I mean, as far as bang for your buck goes, it's uh, excellent sparkling wine it's got a lot of the same qualities so um, and I've had this one it's good I actually prefer it to champagne mm. you know, with, a lot of people mm. do Prosecco, yeah. you get a larger lighter bubble so it's frothier Absolutely. in the mouth makes mm -hmm. it easier to drink yeah, yeah. and so it's, it's what the Millennials are gravitating towards too and, and damn in large part <laughs> in large part because of the price yeah you know they, they don't have the money yet to, to be buying 70 80 dollar bottles of champagne but they can yeah. go out and spend 10 or 15 for a uh, something from Italy and is this a brute is this a dryer Prosecco? it is drier yeah all right, well, let's give it a little sip. Okay. I apologize for not having the actual wine flutes, but as we talked oh, earlier no, okay. last month, I think wine flutes are sort of going out of fashion. Yes. And bubble regular wine glasses are becoming in fashion. Well, the the tulip-shaped glass the tulip is what's really <laughs> popular now. Well, you really want to be able to smell your wine, and the, the, the flute glass is really just for presentation, but it's not very good for being able to smell, you know, the aromas that come up in your, in your bubbly. Mm -hmm. So I'm... Um, one of those weird people that if I am ordering bubbly at a restaurant, I'll ask for it in a, a, a normal glass. But well, I think I'm going to start doing that too because yeah, it, it's I, becoming more and more standard fare. Yeah. It's not. I would just bring your own glass. <laughs> be, be that one. I would totally Don't do that. Him. I would totally do that, but yeah, we have I'm a few people that we know that actually bring here. their own glasses. Yeah. So well, I'll be the first one to say that's very interesting. It's it's very more much more effervescent than I was expecting. Mm -hmm. It's got a really nice dry kind of minerally yet. Uh, I want to say citrusy bite yeah. to it. It's, it's very refreshing though for a prosciutto. It's one of the uh, nicer ones I've had in a while. We like to start a lot of our tastings out um, with this one just because it's a fun way to introduce it to our guests. Um, this is also a really good prosecco that we like to pair with some of our dessert dips and I brought one of those today. Yeah, this wonderful red one which you probably <clears throat> can't see on camera. You said to me, told me it was a red velvet. It's a red velvet. We're coming out with a whole new food line um, as of next month, and these are two of our new items. So that's the red velvet and that one on that side. That is, is a garlic bacon dip. Well, that's insane. So yeah. I've actually <laughs> sampled it beforehand. It's really good. Um, would you, Rocky, maybe you might know this. Would you, could you have a dip like that with the Prosecco or with our coming up white wine? Would that actually go? You can uh, because the, typically the sparklies are very versatile. Uh, but the rule of thumb is that with you want to pair sweet with sweet and you want the, the wine to be slightly sweeter than whatever it is that you're having. Uh, but a lot of people will sit and have bubbly with just... Bubbles go with anything. Yeah. Bubbles yeah. go with anything. <laughs> or nothing. You, you can't go wrong. If you're wondering what you should have with a certain dish, bubbly almost yeah. always works. We've learned but. our lesson many times, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Drinking yeah. too many bubbles sometimes. Well, I, I, that's really fantastic. And what's the price point of that, roughly? 
Um, that one is in, so the way our prices work, we have a third of our list is um, under $20. Um, that one is one of our under $20. Wow, that's a good value. Um, a third of our list is between 20 and 30, and then we have about a third that cater to the higher end um, wines. Some of them are over $100, but for the most part, we try and price it, you know, in the reachable range. Now, do you have mandatory minimums when people are making a purchase, or can they just buy one bottle? Nope, no minimums, and in fact, um, our hosts are not required to buy anything. Um, some places you have to have um, a minimum purchase before you earn any of your host rewards. Mm -hmm. With uh, Wine Decadence, there's no obligation to buy in order to use your rewards. So. And how many people do you typically invite over if you're a host? So, for me, as a consultant, a, a group of 10 to 15 is ideal, mm -hmm. but I always tell my hosts to over-invite because you know, there's always yeah, a few people, people that can't show up. Yeah, it's always a smart, smart thing. To what do you, do. you bring four bottles, right? So I bring four bottles. You yep. got to figure four bottles, and you're pouring one to two ounce pours, one twenty five ounces per bottle. So you can kind of do the math on where you what you can get away with there. You know, to me, when I first heard about this, it's a fascinating format because we're all so used to other, I want to say, but for a guy, boring type of in home product demonstrations. Yeah. This is a this is a product demonstration where wine is popular. Everybody likes wine. And not only you're actually learning something mm -hmm. instead of just yeah. having some, having just instead of just buying something, you're actually learning something. You're getting to taste stuff yeah. that you might not be able to taste otherwise. So uh, it's a really great format. So it, I've been to a lot of her uh, tastings, and I have noticed that people love to talk about wine. They do. Yeah. It's like Tupperware is great. Nothing against Tupperware, but people don't like to talk about the plastic that the company <laughs> that the Tupperware came from. Actually, they're probably wine, against the plastic. You know, of the yeah, they, they like talking about the grapes and the region and where it came from and, and the flavors that are involved in it and the sip and swirl and all and that. And this so is one of the at-home parties where you will find couples more so than... Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Know. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of times uh, the guys, it's, there's nothing for the guys. It's usually uh, the women, they go and they... they Leave the poor guys at home. Yeah, which can be good too. This but is one that <laughs> the guys ask if they can. Come they can along. come to. <laughs> no, and I, I like events like this because everyone's palate is different. Everyone's going to taste something different in the wine, and it's it's fun to get a group together like that and yes. just have everybody compare notes. Okay, I, I taste a little apple, and maybe yep. somebody mm. else gets a little orange or some citrus. And so, it's, so it's, what do you guys taste in this? Just out of curiosity, if you had to. I I got a hint of minerality from this, mm -hmm. but it yeah. faded yeah. away very quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just a touch of sweetness. It's got some so sweetness I wouldn't call there, this yeah. a, uh, a standard brute. Yeah, it's I, got I find like it a, a little off dry. Yeah, a little golden, maybe like a golden delicious yeah, apple exactly. flavor. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's an interesting. And then it does have yeah. that uh, kind of brioche bread quality that you get in a lot of the uh, sparklers, which you guys might know comes from. Lee's aging, which I could get into that, but yeah. we only have 25 minutes. So I won't, five bottles. So. I, won't, uh, I won't go out down that road. Uh, you, you could probably uh, go down that road what, if we have time at yeah, the end. Yeah, uh, yeah, we, yeah. I tell you what, next uh, champagne special next, we do. Yeah, we'll, 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 about we'll get aging. all into the Charmat versus <laughs> Method tradition now. All, all right, right, so let's yeah. finish up this. And uh, okay. um, Sandy, if you want to start talking about what our next selection will be, it is a white. So this is our Four Graces Pinot Gris. Um, it is a Pinot Gris from Willamette Valley. And I, I like it. What do you think? Oh, uh, yeah, I like this one a lot. So, and you know, grease are very light style wines, yes, very light body. Yeah. Before I got into doing the in home tastings, it, actually, what made me get into it was that I was only drinking Pinot Grigio and Pinot Gris. Mm -hmm. I never tried anything else. Yeah. And I figured this was a good way for me to expand my palate, uh, earn a little money while I do it, um, and get the tax benefit. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've kind of gotten away from Pinot Gris since doing this, and this is the first one I've found in three years that I actually find myself like wanting to drink again. Well, what's interesting is, I think me and Jim have talked about this in the past, and I might have with you, Rocky. Pinot Gris tend to, I, I hate to put them all in the same category, but they tend to taste alike. Yes, they do. There's not much yeah. difference. Yeah. Yeah. So before I even taste this, I'm very curious to see if it's going to be something that's really stands out to me. And Did you already taste yours, yeah, Jim? Yeah, I, I get a lot more fruit from this than mm -hmm. you do from your typical Pinot Gris or Pinot Grigio. So this, I, I see why you fell in love with this. Yeah. It's, it's, got, it's got a little it's more body to it. It's very yep. Uh, it's got better mouthfeel. You know, a lot of Pinot Grigio is very, very watery. Yes. And it just, it just washes down. This is not watery and it's not overly sweet. This is what I would call, and we've used this term before, a great summer pounder mm -hmm. or patio pounder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this yeah. would be a great spring and summer, though this is certainly enjoyable this time of year too. I think you guys are going to be watching the show in March. But this is a really unique tasting Pinot Grigio. And uh, I find it really, really nice. Very nice. It'll be a good summer wine. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'll classify that as a spring and summer summer white, sure. Yeah, and in this region is, 
mainly known for its Pinot Noir, the Willamette Valley, and they have excellent Pinot Noirs there, but uh, it's really coming up as far as like uh, Pinot, Pinot Gris. Uh, you're seeing a lot of Riesling out of there now, which is excellent. So it's just, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the scores that that region has been getting lately have been in the high 90s. So I We mean, actually it, saw the Four Graces Pinot Noir in our yes, Wine Enthusiast mm -hmm. magazine just yep. recently. And that price point is roughly twenty four dollars. About twenty four dollars. So that's mm -hmm. price similar to the Santa Margarita. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But better. <laughs> I, 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 I think I like this better than the Santa Margarita. Yeah. But that's that's the other Pinot Grigio. That if I'm if someone's asking me for a really good Pinot that's Grigio, a, yeah, that's, that's, a really that's the go to. Popular. But I, I tell mm -hmm. them you're going to pay a lot more for Santa yeah. Margarita yep. than you're going to pay for any other Pinot Grigio. And a lot of times people say, "What? I'm paying over twenty dollars for Pinot Grigio." Yeah. Even I sometimes, when I'm looking at Pinot Grigio, I say, yeah, I don't know if I want to pay over $15 for Pinot Grigio. Yeah. But there are exceptions, and I think this is an example of mm -hmm. an exception where you're getting a good quality tasting Pinot Grigio that's not watery, it's not overly sweet, and it's a good balance between the two. Yeah, sometimes you yeah. just want that easy, quaffing white wine that you <laughs> yeah. sit on the patio yeah. and, and drink. And Pinot Grigio is never going to be like pow in your face kind of thing. Nor should be. Tropical fruits and all right. the, the. But it, it, as far as wine goes, it's a very, it's a good, simple wine and this one is you know if most of them are kind of lower in the fruit profile this one's a little bit higher than you would expect out of a typical pinot grigio so just a, a, pinot just Gris, a notch, I guess not super say. high though no, but there's more character to this too mm -hmm. this is uh, i think this stands above your typical pinot grigio mm -hmm. it's it's got it's got character it's got uh, some fruit flavors mm -hmm. yes yeah, i'm very pleased with it I'm happy to hear. So is this, the, is this the normal progression you would also start when you're doing an in-home demonstration? You would really start with the bubbles and a white and move to the stronger or the weaker reds? Yeah, I always do two whites and two reds. Um, and then what we like to do is present based on the body of the wine. So you're always going to start with the, the whites and then move on up to the reds. So typically when I go from the whites, I go into like a Pinot Noir. And how long do these uh, in-home Demonstrations the demonstration is typically 45 minutes, maybe an hour. depends on how chatty people get. Um, but I'm usually in and out in an hour and a half to two hours. I'm only asking some people, if they're interested in this, they probably want to know, well, how much of my time as a host am I going to be devoting to this? Yeah. But, you know, you're drinking wine. So actually, the longer you are with people and drinking with them, the more prone they are to want to buy something. Yeah. <laughs> to want to buy, <laughs> so, <laughs> Yes. And the other yes. thing I was going to bring up is these aren't available in the stores. So... So actually, some of them are. Um, the novella is exclusive to us. Yeah. Um, so that is something you can only get through Wine Decadence. We have three different novella wines. Um, but the other wines are wines that, unlike some other places, some other wine companies, you can actually find our wines um, in stores or on your local, at your local restaurant. So some of the wines that we have are actually at Rizzuto's. Okay. Um, Firestone is one of the brands that we carry, um, and they do have uh, that by the glass at Rizzuto's. Um, I've seen Chalk Hill. We also have Chalk Hill um, Chardonnay, and I have seen that at Vintage. Mm -hmm. So these are wines that if I do a demonstration in your house and you like it, you can go out to your local restaurant and most likely find it on one okay. of the lists. After you buy it from Sandy, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, thumbs up on that one. That's, yeah, uh, that's a big very one. Yeah, pleasant, like very pleasant, very pleasant yeah. surprise on that. That was really enjoyable. And uh, this was really cold, so I know you guys kept this cold before mm -hmm. getting yeah. it. In your experience, Rocky, and I know, Jim, we've talked about this, should this all Pinot Grigio would be really, this is the right temperature that we're drinking. I think the, the, way, the way it typically works is that the higher the acid content in wines, and especially white wines, you want them to be colder. So um, this one, I think, is probably refrigerator cold is okay. Usually with white wine, you want to let it cold down, uh, warm down a little bit uh, from the refrigerator, but this one right out of the fridge, I think, is, yeah. is excellent. So Thumbs up for me. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Now, you do realize if we don't like something, we're going to have to tell you. I'm A-OK with that. <laughs> <laughs> if well, everybody liked this, the same kind of wine, they would only make one kind of wine, that's right? That's true. Yeah. So, well, I mean, the the I, problem is, Jim and I have been doing the show so long, we pretty much like everything. It's really got to be bad. And i got to be honest with you, I'm the one who's had most of the dogs on the show yeah. <laughs> over the last seven years. I, there's some I still haven't heard the end of, that well, Russian one that yeah, time. Well, the, yeah. the problem is you, you break my rule every time. You don't try it before you buy it, oh. and then you get stuck with a... A well, dog. So, yeah, sometimes it's got to be like you're on let's make a deal behind that curtain. You don't know what's going to be behind <laughs> that curtain. It could be a zonk, you know, or it could be the grand prize. So you got to go that way. Well, that was fantastic. So um, I think I'll let Jim start pouring down that in this okay. time. As, uh, Sandy, you tell us a little about the next one we have coming So up? this is our uh, Grove Mill Pinot Noir. Um, people typically think of Pinot Noir and like you guys were just talking about the Willamette Valley. Um, this is from Marlboro. So it's coming from a different region. Marlboro? Yes. 
a region that is uh, mostly known for their Sauvignon Blanc. Got that right, absolutely. Which I've, I've finally come around on the Marlboro uh, Sauvignon Blanc. I used to detest it, but the more I'm drinking, uh, I'm starting to get... <laughs> My it's wife just, only drinks. That's all, I want that's all my wife drinks. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's very it's good. a very popular varietal. I will she have to say. She loves the acidity. She loves the, yeah. the citrus you get from those. Oh, it's that a grass note that I have a hard time getting. I past don't like the grassy it, ones, the, but you, there are quite a few you can get that don't have that grassy characteristic. Yeah, we we started drinking uh, some out of France, and uh, you know, you it has a lot, a lot less of that grassy mm -hmm. note. Yeah. And once I got past the grassy note, I was I'm so sorry, dear. We're here to talk about your wine. I'm, no, not at all. I'm going to be quiet now. But yes. But this is. Talk about this wine. This does not have a grassy quality. <laughs> um, part of getting this from um, an area like New Zealand or Marlboro, where you're not typically seeing a Pinot Noir, you're going to get a better price point. So this is one of our wines that actually sells in the under twenty dollars range. It's a really uh, unusual color, at least from the Pinot Noirs I've sampled on the show before. It's very, a little on the lighter very side. Very light. Mm -hmm. That's light. why yeah. I like to show it after the white. Yep. Don't get a lot of earthiness with this either. Mm -mm. New Zealand. Which is, well, yeah, that's what you expect from a, a Burgundy. From a Burgundy, yeah. This is uh, this is New World, uh, yeah. Marlboro, New yeah. Zealand. New Zealand's putting out some really good Pinot Noir lately. Uh, um, the Marlboro, a very popular region. You've got the two islands, and then you have Martinboro up here, Central Otago. But you have uh, Marlboro, which is I assume is the most popular region, obviously for Sauvignon Blanc, but I think for Pinot Noir as well. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, I think that the, the stuff that's coming out of there is similar to Burgundy in kind of its elegance, but it has the kind of the Willamette Valley profile as far as you get that cinnamon flavor to it. You get some of that um, uh, cedar flavor to it. So it's, it's, it's really like a land in between California and, and Burgundy. There's really, it's got a lot of a lot of characters that you could pick up from both, but I like it a lot. And it's got so, a very long finish too. It I mean, does I have a long still finish. Getting yeah, some for, fruit for flavor. A, I, I, I sampled my wine before you started talking, <laughs> and I'm still tasting the that's fruit. That's just it. So right. you know that's a long time. Yes, yes. <laughs> which is, a, as you well know, is a sign of a good wine. Exactly. To, so yeah. to get you know a 30 second finish out of a wine that's less than 20 bucks yeah. is, is uh, you know, that's phenomenal. Deal, yeah. so. I got to say, that's really really nice. It's uh, yeah. very unique for a Pinot Noir. Of course, that's my first, from that region, it's my first one I've ever had. Really? So, um, I'm very impressed. Oh, happy to hear that. I'm, I'm really surprised by the color, too. The color is really nice. It's very light. Yeah, I love looking at the, the light color of Pinot Noir. There's just, I'm a big Pinot Noir guy. I mean, I, no, not, yes. no shame in that, right? Yeah. <laughs> I love Pinot Noir. So, so you'll see you know, quite always, a difference between that. Yeah. Well, I gotta say, I, I'm thinking, Jim. I think Rocky <clears throat> and Sandy are our first husband-wife couple oh. ever on the show. <laughs> are we really? What about the seamstress? Did did her husband come on? Which one? No, that was with okay. the guy she was singing with at the opera that performance. Well, they were on separate shows. That was. Um, you're thinking they of the were, opera singer. Uh, they thinking, were, but they yes. were both on, but they were on separately. They were on separately. So I think you are the first. You are the first. Yeah, breaking ground. Husband, wife. Well, cheers, right. I think we need to cheers. cheers yes, how about that? that. Yeah. And, and actually, yeah. Rocky. Yeah. Two guys first. <laughs> <laughs> cheers, and Rocky, I think you're the first person we've ran on the show studying to be a sommelier. So, I mean, uh, you, you got a lot. Yeah. We are actually both going to be taking the WSET Level 2 in what, April? April 3rd. So, right. mm -hmm. so you've already passed yeah, Level 1? She has passed level one. You don't actually have to take level one. Okay. Um, I've been studying for, I was, a, there, there's several different um, schools, uh, but for us, we kind of decided to move away from the uh, Court of Masters uh, and go into the WSET. Again, we only have 25 minutes, so I'm not going to get into that, <laughs> but it, they're very similar and uh, for, for based on what she's trying to do, which is to break into uh, the, the, you know, dealing with her retail here and breaking into the retail industry. And, uh, it, I think that it'll be good for both of us. So uh, that's going to be fun. She's incredibly worried that I'm going to pass <laughs> and she's going to fail. I'm, I am not so confident that it won't be the other way around. So uh, because I tend now to you, I tend to overthink when I take well, tests. So. Yeah, I you I both have like, fabulous palates. I think you're both going to fly through. With <laughs> Sandy here is one of those super tasters. So like yeah. she, you know she can smell you know a, a bar rag from across the room. Yeah. So we actually there are places that we can't go if they if they're they have the the bleach rag. Yeah. Like, uh, you got to take, your, take but, your own coffee can with you. For, is that yeah? yeah. That's just sniff it. the coffee. Yeah. Smelling that's wine. Normal. Like, yeah. I can't, I've got nothing. So you're gonna there. take your own wine glass and <laughs> some coffee grounds. Yeah, right? Everyone will know who we are. Well, three winners to start off, and I know we have two left. And boy, I I got to say we're off to a, a rousing start. Bob, I'll let you yes. pour from your end. So I'm gonna say this because I wanted to say this, Sandy. Dolce Rosso. 
There you go. So <laughs> please tell us about this little jar. So gem. this is a red blend um, from California. Beautiful red. Novella Beautiful. is one of our um, exclusive wines that you can only get through Wine Decadence. Um, the product line has three different wines. We have, this is our only red, the Dolce Rosso. Um, we also have a Dolce Blanco, and we have a Symphony, which is a sweet uh, white as well. Um, this was actually created by uh, some of our consultants coming together with the company and tasting some different blends and kind of deciding which ones they wanted to market. So, so this one you have to get through your, your company? This you can only get through Wine Decadence, yes. And this is a little bit on the sweeter side. Um, we do like to kind of sell this as a dessert wine. So if you are not big on sweet, you, I mean, you get it right on the I nose. I get some sugar on the nose. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's uh, desserty. Yep. Yeah, that's very desserty. This is actually the first time for those of you watching at home. This is the first time I've ever tried it. And it's, oh, okay. Yep. And I, I believe I read that this, <clears throat> these are sourced from Sonoma, uh, California. Uh, All over yes. California. Absolutely. Yep. So and I'm actually really surprised. It's only a 12.5 the for mm -hmm. alcohol. Normally, yeah. when you get wines that are labeled or dessert wine, you usually bump it up. 16 a little bit. or higher is, is the. So this is for even though it's a little food. sweet, it's a dry sweet. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. But this is this is all grapes. There's no sugar added. Nope. I, I've had a couple of Brazilian red wines that mm -hmm. they actually dump sugar into the wine oh. to mm. raise the sugar level. Okay. Yep. No, no sugar added. Okay. That's it's interesting, as opposed to just dumping the, the pure grape juice back in. They yeah. actually dump sugar yeah. into Yeah, well, they the... grow so much sugar cane down there, they got to use it up. Wow. And they make ethanol <laughs> out of it and they dump it in the wine. Hey, yeah. you know what? If it, <laughs> if it works and it sells, why not? And that's, yeah, <laughs> you, you, when you drink with Brazilians, they expect their wine to be sweet. Yeah. So That's, this, this yeah. would be the perfect wine for them. Oh. I'm actually trying to think, um, based on all the parties we've had and, and so forth, how I would serve this. I don't know if I would serve this as a dessert wine. I might serve this later in the evening, uh, not maybe like we're doing now, maybe the fourth or fifth wine if mm -hmm. we were doing a tasting. But I, you know, I don't, I don't think I'm going to classify this as dessert wine. I don't think it's sweet enough. Really? Yeah. Well, that's you know, to go back to what you were talking about earlier. You know, you want to have uh, the wine be sweeter than the dessert you're serving. Mm -hmm. And I honestly, I don't think this is going to hold up to some of the sweeter yeah. desserts you're going to yeah. put out on the table. So, yeah, I, it's, I, I agree with Bob. I would serve this uh, at some point during the evening, but I wouldn't necessarily. Say it's yeah. it's the dessert wine. Unless well, you yeah. put it at dry, I'd put it yeah. off dry somewhere around that, but certainly not certainly not sweet. Um, and I, I have a lot of friends who who drink nothing but sweet wine, mm -hmm. and they're going to drink that the entire meal. And I'll tell you what the 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 California, and this is very, very typical California. Um, it's got that that sweet flavor, fruit forward profile. People love it. I mean, they just do. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's almost no tannin whatsoever. A lot of people are turned off by tannin. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those weird guys that'll drink a Debbie that came out <laughs> five months ago uh, that just rips your face off. But, uh, I mean, this is, a, again, another easy drinking wine as far as... I would almost probably chill this a little bit <laughs> because yeah. it's got... I can see that. That's how know? I serve the Brazilian can, reds yeah. that, that can, are super sweet. i, yeah. I got to get them cold. But I could, I could drink this during the summer, too, just sitting yeah. out on the deck. Well, I drank this pretty quickly. So for me, wow. my palate says <laughs> not, a, not a dessert wine. And uh, I'm wow. pretty, my palate is very sensitive to overly sweet overly sweet. See, I find that sweet. So that's interesting. I like how people can just taste different things. Because to me, that is all sweet. <laughs> it's sweet. It's sweet, but it's not super sweet. And I've... You've had I, I, well, I, yeah, I, we'll, we'll do some, some more tasting later. I, I've got some <laughs> really sweet stuff I can share with you. Uh, yeah. Okay. And while you guys are still drinking that, I, I believe it or not, time goes by so fast that we only have like six minutes left. I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the next wine because this is my own. Jim and I have been doing the show for well over, over seven years now, I think. And I don't think we've had many Australian wines on the show, if maybe one or two. Well, in a the, couple, but not many. Not yeah. many. And uh, for those of you who drink uh, Australian wine, and I'm familiar with Pen Penifolds, um, this is the Penifolds. It's a Rossin's Retreat, which is available out there now. It's a 2017. I just had this at a wine tasting, oh, maybe three or four weeks ago. I can't remember. Time goes by so fast. For a very moderately priced Australian red, I really like this. And I liked it so much, I wrote down what I, what I thought in my mind. And I, what was the word that I used? A restrained lightness. Is that what I said to you yes. earlier? That was and it just, it's a restraint. It's light. But it's restrained. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but maybe Rocky will understand it when he tastes it. Well, he's already tried. Have you tasted this one yet? I did. I tried it uh, at the beginning um, just to figure out there. where we would put it in the sequence. <laughs> but yeah, it did. if I had it to do over, I might have put it this one at the last. But you know, is... that was my palate, and I know we discussed how we should taste this tonight, and we all agreed it should be the last wine tonight because it was probably going to be the strongest. 
So. Well, we also wanted Sandy to get to talk about all her wines yeah. before we. That's true. Something else. <laughs> that is true. And I know you see a lot of Australian wines. Australian wines are, have ebb and flowed over the years. At one time they were everywhere, and now they've waned a little bit. But you can still get some quality. There are well, there's tons of quality there's Australian wines. There's some great Australian wines out there. Uh, Penifolds is oh, probably yeah. one of the Penfolds. biggest, yeah. oldest yeah. producers of you wine can, in Australia. You can really drop some money on some Penfolds. <laughs> uh, this one sells yeah. for under 10 bucks, though. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah such it a, is. And that's it's what I was going to say map, before you yeah. – well, actually, I wasn't going to tell you the price point. But, yeah, this is under $10. Wow. That's great for the, for the price point. You, that's – and it's a South no, Australian no. wine, so uh, it's a, I think that's the engine room for most where the most wine comes from, mm -hmm. especially for the Shiraz grape to yeah. begin with. But it's a very young wine. It's a, it's a 2017. I'm surprised it's on the shelves now. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's a little green. It's the Southern Hemisphere, so they're they're actually half a year ahead of us. So that's true. Right. You're not going <laughs> to true, but, they, but my Southern. point is there's no aging to this. Yeah. It's not uh, you know they, they normally. But this is a wine that you can drink young. I mean, yeah. I, I, I tasted it earlier, and it's it's perfectly fine. It's not ripping my face off with tannin. So, I mean. what's interesting about Rawson's retreat um, is, depending on the vintage, it sometimes is, is aged in American oak, sometimes in French oak. So, depending on the vintage, you'd have to check that out. Hmm. I believe this one, 2017, is a California uh, oak. Yeah. But sometimes they they age in they French. They switch oak. it up every, Gosh, every year. I, the, one of the hardest things that I have, as far as like trying to figure, it, I do the blind tasting, studying for. The test and determining whether it's American or, yeah. or French oak is so difficult for me. Mm -hmm. uh, people people say that you're supposed to taste coconut or dill in the uh, in the American oak. I really never do. Huh. No. So, I no, mean, so I, we, Rocky, we have about maybe a minute and a half left, and I wanted uh, <coughs> Sandy to say if the, uh, contact information or if they wanted to get a hold of you. Yeah. Or if you want to become a rep. For yeah. It. Yeah. Either if you are looking men to are, men are also learn. Yeah. No, just well, he is my. I bring him to most of my <laughs> my tastings. I call him my lovely assistant. He helps me pour and set up. Um, but yes, this is open to men and women. It's not like um, Tupperware, you know, where it's a mostly women-driven industry. We do have uh, male reps as well. Um, if you're interested in becoming a rep, if you're interested in hosting a free in-home wine tasting, um, you can find me on Facebook. My name is Sandy Holland. Or you can email me, and my email is sandywine9579 at gmail.com. And we'll, how sorry. far do you travel throughout the state? I'll go anywhere in Connecticut. Anywhere in Connecticut, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And both Sandy and Rocky are members and sort of founders of the West Hartford Wine Club. Mm -hmm. that's yes. been around for a while. Yeah. So check them out also. Just look yeah. up West Hartford You've got a Facebook page for that also, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. We're, we're up Hartford to 234 Club. members, I think, yeah. as of earlier today. So. And I think, Jim, we've passed we the 200 mark on our Facebook page for uh, wow. two guys in a lot of wine. They're outdoing us. I'm one of them for a few days. I love getting those updates. So, Rocky, just a really quick, is there anything coming up with you in regards to any wine specials? I know you're on the. I'm always interested in wines and anything with you. Uh, well, as far as the wine club goes, uh, we recently had a meeting. I don't, I don't, I don't guess we really have anything coming up. But well, the Vines of okay. March for the Rotary Club is coming Vines up March in March. Vines of March for Rotary Club. We're um, committed to doing that today. We are hoping to get a table together for the West Hartford Wine event. Club. So. So, oh, all right. If you guys are interested in that, we've been to that before, and it's a, that's a lot, a lot of fun. fun. Yeah. And Jim, I know you're in Boston all the time. Anything the, going the on? The Boston about? Wine Expo is in February, so that's, mm -hmm. the show will be on the air in February if, if you're uh, watching this in time. Come on up to Boston, drink some wine. Look for me. I'll be at one of the tables there. And I got to say, I got to give Jim hands down kudos for coming down. He <laughs> travels down from Boston. He used to live here in the area. Now he's up in Boston with his lovely wife uh, exploring and working in the wine field up there. And, Jim, I want to thank you again for coming down. I because, love doing uh, this show. I, I hate missing it. I hate, their, I hate the months when I can't get down here. It's, <laughs> I know we've missed you a couple of times, and uh, you know, I've always said that we miss you down here. And thanks for coming down tonight. I My really pleasure. appreciate it. So I want to thank everybody for watching. And... Uh, Keep us uh, in your hearts and in your wine tables. And until next time, keep us in your wine cellar.